Hey everybody, it's Thursday afternoon, time for your weekly update. I decided to do things a little bit different this time and come to you from a much prettier location since it's such a gorgeous afternoon and we're heading into a rainy weekend. So hang with me, I'm getting to the right page here. All right, so with regard to testing, that state map that we use for our data is going to be updated tonight. So you can take a look at it either tonight or tomorrow morning. And then it will switch to being updated the first and third Thursdays in November and December, so every two weeks. Um, so you'll be wanting to check it on um, November the 5th, November the 19th, December the 3rd, and December the 17th. And I'll keep you posted after those dates, whether it goes back to being the second and the fourth or whether it sticks to the first and the third Thursdays of each month. Um, but for right now, those are your dates that you're gonna be wanting to check it. All right, with regard to visitation, we've learned that the um, IG's expectation and CMS, so they've, they've kind of been in touch with CMS, is for facilities to follow CMS guidance, um, except for you all know that the state's infection uh, rate map that we just talked about should be used to, to supplement the CMS guidance. We've also received clarification that OIG's interpretation of that guidance is for outdoor visitation to continue even if a facility has had a positive COVID-19 test result within the last 14 days. Um, so I just wanna make sure everybody understands that. So outdoor visitation should continue. C um, IG's office was told that CMS never intended to restrict outdoor visitation as long as it's conducted safely, following infection control parameters, CDC guidelines, you know, social distancing, um, and that basically outdoor visitation should be done at all times, unless of course you have weather restrictions, um, that type of thing. So all of that being said, take a look at the, the guidance. Um, if there is a large outbreak in your facility, you are permitted to limit the number of visits allowed in your facility. Um, but I would encourage you to really document um, any decision-making process that you go through. You know, if, if you have community outbreak, community spread, if you're red on that map and you decide to start to limit visitation in your facility, just document your rationale and make sure you have that available when, you're, um, when your surveyors come into your building and be able to justify your decision-making process. Because we know now that some of this rationale is changing and we know that CMS is now saying, basically, visitation should occur we don't want to trample on residents' rights. So err on the side of visitation, come up with creative ways to do that. The other thing I wanted to let you all know is that CMS is allowing CMP grant money to be used for sturdier, more solid types of outdoor structures um, versus tents. So, you know, like pagodas or, or like wooden structures, um, but it's still limited to that $3,000 per site. I hope to goodness every building has applied for those CMP funds. There's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be applying for that, that money. Um, it's just money to, to come to your facility to help with this visitation. So please, please, please apply for that. Um, and then again, document, document, document all of your justification and, and rationale for what you're, for what you're doing, your decision making. All right, on to the vaccination distribution program. Um, as you all know, last Friday, and I knew that was going to happen. Remember you all, I say all these updates come out on Friday, right after we do these Thursday updates. So it'll happen again, I'm sure. But on Friday, the White House announced the Pharmacy Partnership for Long-Term Care uh, Program, which is that vaccine distribution program for long-term care residents. Well, it's funny. We don't even have a vaccine yet, but they're already planning on that, which is good. So long-term care facilities have until the end of October uh, to register with the CDC on how you'd like to receive and administer the COVID-19 vaccine once it becomes available. Um, I strongly, we strongly encourage all of you to go ahead and participate and register as soon as um, you're able to. And, and that forum, that um, link is open now. So please go ahead and do that. There is risk associated with which option you choose. And AHCA has put together some good resources for you to take a look at. You know, you there's a partnership or I guess a contract that has been issued um, between CMS and CVS and Walgreens. But just so you all know, there's been some um, pushback from independent, I guess, other pharmacies out in the community. So 
do know that, that there are options. And if you decide to go um, with a different option, so if you're going to work with your existing pharmacy partner or you work with an alternative partner like a hospital or a local or state health department, you're just encouraged to ask to see a signed copy of that entity's provider agreement with their state and CDC. Otherwise, you run the risk of not being included in early rounds of vaccine um, delivery and distribution. So just kind of keep those things in mind. Um, that contract process has already been worked out with CVS and Walgreens. So if you choose to go a different route, you're just kind of taking a little bit more of a risk, I'd say. Um, so just kind of keep those things in mind as you make your choices. All right, let's see. Um, and finally, this is the very last piece. So finally, the Secretary of Health and Human Services on, uh, I think it was at the beginning of October, and we're just now kind of getting more and more information from this, renewed the, de renewed the declaration of the COVID-19 national public health emergency. So clearly we've seen the news. We know that um, COVID-19 rates are rising in so many states. Public health emergency has been extended. So it has been extended through at least the end of January, January 20, 20th of 2021, unless the secretary, of course, renews it again. Um, this means that most of those Section 1135 and Section 1812 waivers that uh, you've heard me talk about before, those are all the, the waivers that were put into place at the very beginning of the public health emergency to kind of hopefully make life a little easier for all of us. Um, most of those will continue to be in place. And notably for you, that SNF three-day prior hospitalization requirement um, and the 60-day break and spell illness requirement are still continued. That, that, that waiver is still in place. So I just wanted to make sure you guys have that information. Again, as always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. And if I can find my mouse, it's so bright out here. Ah. I hope everybody has a phenomenal weekend and enjoys, well, gets out in the sunshine somehow. Have a good one.